This time on our DreamWorks Marathon, we're returning to Ardenman as they bring their most popular characters to the big screen. That's right, today we will be looking at Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. So the uh, company Ardenman, which was a small team at the time, introduced the characters Wallace and Gromit in 1989 in their short A Grand Day Out, which is, I think, the best one. I really like how uh, early it looks. Because uh, Wallace, it looks like he has a very thin mouth there, face you can tell there. And yeah, they eventually made two other shorts, and all three of them, I believe, got Academy Awards or Best Animated Short. And they're all pretty good. I recommend watching them if you find them, wherever they are. They're not very long, and they're very entertaining. So they're pretty basic. Just a guy and his dog who doesn't talk, and they go on wacky adventures. Like the first one, they go to the moon so they can find cheese. Well, Wallace to get cheese. Grom doesn't like cheese. I don't, I don't think he does. I mean, he doesn't say he doesn't because he doesn't talk. And the second one, they fight Evil Penguin, which is kind of a weird premise for a short, but it and people like it. And the third one, they had a deal of sheep getting robbed and stuff like that. But anyway, they were they were what made the Armin Studio go on the map and what DreamWorks drew, drew their attention to them. Like, hey, we should use these guys and make films. They had a fine film, film deal, which only lasted for three films because they had such uh, problems with DreamWorks, mostly from them trying to Americanize their stuff. And we'll get into that. Well, one of the first things we're trying to do, they're going to recast Wallace from his original voice actor, Peter Solace, with some I got other person that was more famous. Uh, they had a huge fight over this because, they, of course, they didn't want to replace his voice. And eventually they won in the end, but they had to put in celebrity voice actors. But they just like, hey, we'll put British voice actors. How about that? They're celebrities, so screw you, DreamWorks. Keep in mind, Jeffrey Katzenberg's an asshole. He almost ruined Toy Story and Shrek, so fuck him. So, The Curse of the Warrior Rabbit is the first full-length film from the Wallace and Gromit gang. And it is a horror movie. I'm not joking. Well, it's a kid horror movie, so... If you're scared, don't watch it. Well, just kidding. It's not really scary. But it has a lot of horror elements, so it's probably not the best time to be uploading this in December. But whatever. I do whatever I want. And it's mostly a parody of the Universal movie The Wolfman. It has a lot of elements. I'm not going to go for all of them, but just keep in mind this is a parody of that movie. So this time, Wallace and Gromit, instead of, like, capturing sheep or whatever, I forget, I haven't seen that one in a while, they are, they work for these people who have pest problems because in this town, they are obsessed with vegetables, which is something you won't see a lot in real life. You know, kids don't want to eat their green vegetables. Your green vegetables. Though, oddly enough, the only pest that seems to be around is rabbits. Now, in real life, rabbits don't really eat anything but grass, to be honest, but... Uh, they won't be eating your gourd. Uh, a squirrel will probably do that more damage, but for the theme of the movie, it has to be a rabbit, because rabbits are funny, and a were-rabbit's a lot funnier than a were-wolf, which is what the cult concept of the movie is. So what do they do with the rabbits? Well, they, uh, they kill them. Well, just kidding, they don't. I guess instead of releasing them into the wild, they have them kept here for some reason. I guess because they want to rehabilitate them, which is a later plot point. But, you know, just release them somewhere else, you know? Come on. But, they, yeah, they like carrots, which is actually a myth. Well, they can eat carrots. They don't go for carrots. Uh, they actually start with Bugs Bunny, believe it or not, who was parodying in our movie. But that's a whole tangent for another day. Right now, the rabbits, they, they, they're eating everything, basically, in this town. These rabbits are crazy, basically. They're they are hopped up on ass or something. They want to eat everything in sight. And that's the problem. Also, if you notice the background, for some reason, instead of like getting an email or something, they have to have their clients' faces all over their walls, which is kind of freaking weird, if you ask me. I know it's kind of funny, but at the same time, so there's got to be a better way to do that. I know Wallace, you know, he's a little bit of a freak. I mean, he flew all the way to the moon just to eat some cheese, but, you know. Also, speaking of Americanization, uh, this plant here, which I think is a squash, let me look that up real quick. So yeah, this is a marrow, which is a type of gourd, like a pumpkin, which isn't really a vegetable either, but it's more in that realm. But because of Jeffrey Katzenberg being an asshole, they had to add a really bad dub, calling it a melon, which would have cost more if they said watermelon, because they already animated. Stop motion doesn't cost, it costs a lot of money. In fact, I think they ran out of clay recently. I'm not, I hope I'm not making that up, but I keep seeing it over the place. How do you run out of clay? How is that prize marrow of yours coming off? Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, I actually found the original Briz version, and in fact, I can't even find a clip of the one I saw, which is the American version, where he says melon. He says marrow there. I'm, I'm actually shocked. I thought they cut it out of the movie entirely, but I guess in the British version, they kept it in. We are then introduced to two new characters in this franchise, who are played by the celebrities they casted, but of course, they're British celebrities. We got Lady Tottenham, I think? I don't know, I'm not British. Who's played by Helen Lebottom Carter, if I'm saying that right. 
And we have the villain here, who I forgot his name. I call him Baldhead. He's played by Ray Fiennes, who's actually the second time he played a villain in DreamWorks. He was in the villain in Pearls of Egypt, which I gave a great review that everyone loved. They loved it so much. So his giant hair is in a fashion statement. It's a toupee, because he's bald. What you see is what you get. <laughs> but yeah, I forgot they were sucking on rabbits here with their vacuum machine that they got from Luigi. And for some reason, Wallace wants to get a smooch from Botox Lady here. So this guy here, who I remember his name is Victor, is basically just the evil version of Wallace. He even has his own dog there, who's evil because he's a bulldog, and we all know bulldogs are evil. This won't be an anime movie about a character being a simp, and of course Wallace shows his simpness by making a giant picture to uh, Big Lips here. So one of the main plot points is the rabbits are gone crazy, and the, there's a vegetable festival coming up, so he gotta stop those rabbits from acting all crazy in the field. So he's like, maybe I can hypnotize them, but of course it doesn't really work out that well. Because one of the rabbits ends up getting sucked in, and that, you know, fucks up everything. So we get our first horror scene, I guess unless you count the opening of the movie, where this old priest guy, who I think has some dementia, gets attacked by the infamous were-rabbit, who we don't get to see right now, but we do later. And his vegetables die. And look, there's a Shrek reference there. I hope, I think that is. So much like a typical uh, classic horror movie, the town goes crazy and brings out the torches and pitchforks. And the cop reveals that he is bald and he's a pinhead. Hello. So Wallace and Grandma have a great idea to track the rabbits. Well, at least Wallace does. Grandma doesn't seem that involved. It is this giant rabbit that's supposed to peel them, but they forgot to make the rabbit look like Lola Bunny because this rabbit is t way too thick. But hey, some of the rabbits might like that. Oh, come on, Grammy. A bit more, as you know, alluring. Oh, 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 very cheeky. If you couldn't guess that play didn't work as the were-rabbit comes out of nowhere, but Wallace is nowhere to be seen. And if you couldn't guess who the were-rabbit is, because uh, you're best behind, you're also maybe a little kid, uh, the were-rabbit turns out to be none other than our cheese-loving man himself, Wallace. But there's a new problem when Victor Crom here wants to kill Wallace because he was flirting with his woman. That he wants to marry because she's rich, I guess. I mean, no one wants to marry her because of her looks, because she doesn't have good looks, let's be honest. But, uh-oh. He gets thrown like a little bitch! And we finally get to see what the were-rabbit looks like, who has been hyped out to be really scary, but in reality, it is <laughs> really goofy looking. I mean, what do you expect? It's a rabbit. Well, the villain is like, goes to the little guy like, hey, how can I kill this guy? And he's like, with... 24 carat gold. Get it? Carat. And a bullet. A bullet. A bullet. A bu oh. This is not a main thing, but that one rabbit from earlier also got his mind swap, so he likes cheese now. Isn't that swell? There's also this scene where these two dogs get into a, a dog fight. I mean, what what's more can you want from a movie? <laughs> So, of course, uh, the movie ends, the guy tries to kill Wallace as a rabbit, but of course Gromit, who's the best character, uh, saves the day using his plane skills, and apparently a toy plane can fly. I mean, does it really matter? I guess not. That's one big old carrot. So it looks like Wallace is dead, but turns out the power cheese can bring back people to life. It also looks like the box may contain nuts, which is very interesting. And that's the end of the movie. The villain got chased out of town. I guess Wallace got cured of being a, a were-rabbit. And everyone lives happily ever after. Wallace and Grummet, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, gets a 9 out of 10 for me, or 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's a pretty damn good movie. Airman's pretty good. Unfortunately, I know the next movie is going to be as good. But if you like Wallace and Gromit, or you like stop motion, or you even like any Halloween theme, go ahead and watch this movie. It's pretty excellent. Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit, is going at the top of the A tier, 9 out of 10. I ranked it a little lower last time I saw it, but I don't know what I was thinking. It's a really greatly made movie. It has a lot of fun in-jokes, and the animation stop motion is pretty great. It 
definitely ups the ante from their previous shorts and their previous film, at least in my opinion. And I just personally really like it a lot. When it comes to the villain, I think the villain's okay. I think you get a B tier. Funny at times and a little bit threatening, but not the funniest when it comes to the jokes. I feel like the uh, movie wants him to be funnier than he actually is, but he serves the plot pretty well as the anti-Wallace with his dog, who's also pretty funny. The dog's not on this list, but we'll rank him with this guy. Also, at the end, his hair becomes cotton candy. So, what more could you want? Next time, we will be looking over the hedge, but don't worry, Iron Man fans. The next Iron movie is coming soon, because it is. No cracks, Gromit. We've forgotten the cracks.